this room here generally hangs sort of genre paintings, history paintings. In the case of Musée d'Orsay, there wasn't a special room for making an exhibition, really. A room had to be found. I'd had an exhibition at the Courtauld in London. The curator from the Orsay and um, the director had, had, um, had seen the show. They approached me and asked if I'd be interested in doing something at the, um, at the museum. I think the discussion started off first just to have a, a group of my works within a room at the museum. Various rooms were discussed, but I very much wanted to use the room as it had been used to hang the collection and um, see how my paintings would fit into, into that approach. We knew we were going to stack the paintings, certain instances. So yeah, that, that did sort of help make the final choice. The museum asked me if I'd like to make selections from the museum's collection to hang either amongst my paintings or next to my paintings. It's quite keen not to have them hanging right next to me to make that sort of, you know, immediate compar comparison. I just didn't really want to be sort of hanging um, next to a, a Van Gogh or whatever. I just think it, I just, it, that didn't really interest me, really. I think there's about 13 paintings from the collection hanging there. Decided to put some sculpture in there. Degas studies, sculptural studies. Kind of wanted to try and replicate that, that look of the storeroom. And it's a little bit more ordered in, in the situation here. Nevertheless, it's quite sort of full and I think full of a lot of movement. There was a lot to discover in the paintings that I hadn't seen before and neither had the people who work in the museum. I chose this painting by Jerome um, really because it kept on sort of catching my eye when I was walking around the collection, seeing it in real life. Um, I, it kind of always stopped me in my tracks. I thought it was this kind of extraordinary expression of sort of, I guess, benign cruelty, really. These two beautiful youths, semi-clothed, and then these two birds are about to engage in a, in a cockfight. I felt that it was a great sort of restrained vision of sort of complicitness, complicitness in a very, very sort of cruel act and sort of enjoying with incredible sort of indifference. I mean, the other interesting thing about bringing the painting from its dark velvet clad rooms to bring it up to be shown in natural light I think that the light kind of reveals a lot more in the painting than what you normally see. For instance, um, just all, obviously the, the, the attention to detail, um, but also little aspects that neither I nor even, uh, I think the director of the museum had noticed was the, uh, what almost looks like sort of bloodstains coming down this statue in the background of the Sphinx. It almost looked like sort of blemish on the painting. Rousseau's painting, The War, it's a painting that I've enjoyed looking at since I was a teenager, really. A perennial anti-war painting. It's always a conflict going on, and um, it's very gruesome in its details. Slain bodies in the lower part of the painting. I think it was probably a great influence on Picasso's Guernica. Its expression is in every part of its making, it's intent. Um, it's like a scream of a painting.
I think recently it um, has been an influence on paintings that I've made, including the two trees painting in the other room. Landscapes witness to sort of, you know, human violence. Just as powerful today as when it was made. Two different approaches to figure and animals and landscape. I mean, the paintings are made years apart. And Gauguin's making a painting that feels really contemporary even now. And Corbet, in a way, is stuck in um, a type of realism that we associate much more with, with his time. The Corbet painting for me was um, a very personal choice in a way. I had made quite a number of paintings, figures in the snow. I discovered the brother to this painting, which hangs in Rome. I didn't know that this painting existed. It turns out that the painting has never been shown in Paris before. It was discovered in Germany after the war. Rightful owners still um, have not been found, and so it hangs in, in, um, as part of the national collection. This portrait of Camille by Monet, um, she was his, um, his first wife. She died young at 32, and he painted this painting of her on her deathbed. And what one has to remember was the most avant-garde way of mark-making description that existed, really. And so I think he was always nervous about having made the painting and maybe even a little ashamed. Um, I guess maybe he felt it was be seen by some as an affront to the sort of the memory of his, of his wife. But nevertheless, it's an extraordinary thing. And it captures this, this moment, you know, very passionately. Also in a way that's sort of fading. She's fading from view and he somehow managed to capture that using the medium of paint. From the time he painted the painting, it hung in his, his bedroom, even though he was married twice after she died, um, for his whole life. And he never exhibited it. And um, in fact, um, the signature is applied sort of posthumously. So it was a very private work of art. It was really just for him and his close sort of group of friends, family. A very different painting, um, very much about life as opposed to death. And these two sort of actors scheming and um, gossiping. I thought it was an appropriate painting to hang next to um, the Monet. Um, maybe they're discussing her life or Monet's life, I'm not sure, but um, it felt like a, a good pairing. I very much like this period of Suzanne um, he's looking back, he's looking back to the old masters, and yet he's working in a way that is looking forward to painting sort of a hundred years hence. I mean, the use of material is really um, very unusual for this point in history, very direct. A very tender painting, very compassionate painting, and yet painted in quite a, a crude manner and um, he managed to achieve something um, extraordinary. He's really using the material to describe what he needs to describe, and uh, he leaves out a lot. Compared to the Jerome painting, for instance, this is all about sort of the viewer filling in, um, whereas Jerome sort of fills it in for you. In Suzanne's case, he's leaving you, the, the viewer. Imagine the details, really. Imagine the actual um, event. I 
I very much enjoyed selecting the paintings from the collection of the museum. It was, it was, it was a challenge because there was so much and there was so much very, very, very well-known work. Even the selections from the collection, in a way, are, are very much connected to either me or my interests, things that I respond to, really. Experiences that I've had myself. <laughs>